welcome to the Schools Challenge TV. Andrew Davison is son of one of the founders of Bowman Traps and now runs the company himself. He has a passion for shooting, well that's not unusual, lots of us have that, but he also has a passion for the machines that throw those discs of clay, those little spinning dreams, into the air for us to shoot. He is going to explain what it takes to make your own clay pigeon trap. So what sort of metal do you start with? Yeah, we cast the aluminium base, uh, we use cast iron dies so that you, you pour the aluminium in and uh, after a few minutes you, you open the die and it's, it's, it's all a perfect size, it's, it's not like the old style sand casting. Um, they, they varied in size, whereas the new die cast uh, traps, they go straight out of the dies and once they're cooled and they've had their runners cut off, they go straight in a modern CNC machine for milling and uh, tapping. And then everything, everything else is, that hangs off that casting is, is, is made in our factory, is solid and reliable. Uh, once they're welded up, they're then sent off to uh, Sheffield where they do the uh, zinc plating. Uh, they come back, put in storage, and then they're, they're assembled up to a complete unit to, as per orders. We're a bit short on storage space, so we, we build traps to order, basically. We've got, uh, we can build a trap up and it can be shipped out in the afternoon and delivered the next day. Andrew has been working for Bowman all his life. Uh, it's a family business. Uh, I've been involved since uh, I was a school lad. Um, used to go shooting with my father and uh, always interested in engineering. Used to make go-karts while we were still at school. And uh, when I came 16, left school, I just went straight into the business and been here ever since. Yeah, my father started the business uh, with another business partner in uh, 1966. So we've been going, it will be uh, 50 years in a couple of years. And uh, started off with the manual traps and uh, gradually progressed through to the uh, modern automatics as they're known nowadays. Let's catch up with Andrew and the clay pigeon trap making process later in the programme. And now for the school's challenge news. Peter Wilson MBE has announced his retirement from competitive Olympic double trap at the age of 28. From Dorset, Peter gave Great Britain its first shooting gold for 12 years when he won at London 2012. He went on to win the 2013 Al Ain World Cup, which was his last performance for British shooting. Breeden School's entry to the Millfield School Winter Competition saw Tom Scott from Breeden take the high gun of the day with an impressive 45x50. On Saturday the 15th of November, the Oxford Gun Company is hosting the Steam Locomotive Charity Shoot. It will consist of a 50 bird sporting and there are lots of prizes up for grabs in the Open, Ladies and TSC Under 21s categories. The prizes this year include shotguns, air rifles and more. Go to oxfordguncompany.co.uk The Association of Optometrists has paid tribute and given a special award to Schools Challenge sponsor and pioneering Cheltenham optometrist Keith Holland. And finally, TSC's Winter Series is underway. Last weekend's results saw James Bradley Day win the seniors, Will Weaver win the prep, and Heather Dunmore win the ladies. The final is on at the Oxford Gun Company on the 22nd of November 2014. Now, one shooter who has been doing well for himself recently is Matt French. He won silver in double trap at the Commonwealth Games in Scotland this summer. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, a brand spanking new range built purposely for the uh, for the Com Games. Uh, I'm afraid it's you know it's one of the ones that's a bit like London. It's dismantled afterwards, so uh, uh, we won't be visiting there again. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great range and uh, and a great competition. The main contenders um, in our Commonwealth 
nations are, are you know, the big nation is India, really, and uh, Australia have a very, always a very strong team in all the clay target disciplines. Um, and then there's some of the more unusual ones that uh, you wouldn't expect on, on the world scene, but Malta also have a very strong team, um, Cyprus, uh, countries like that, they, they, you know, they're very heavily into shooting and always produce fantastic shotgun shooters. Uh, when it, when it comes down to the final, it's with my teammate, uh, my England teammate Steve Scott, uh, who, uh, who pipped me in the final, uh, shot perfect 30, so uh, that was fantastic shooting by him. Uh, I was just the one behind him on 29. Um, so it was a great day for Team England. The great thing with the Schools Challenge and that, that, uh, that Oakley are doing is um, it, it gives people that, that channel to get to where they want to be, to get into the international teams, to get into competition shooting and, and, and open up their clay target shooting into, into the wider world. And, yeah, it's great. It's really good for them. Next up, how do you learn to shoot in the comfort of your own home? Dry fire, of course. So, this is actually a deactivated gun, so it's perfectly safe um, to demonstrate. So we have the muzzle insert, which is just quite a hard plastic, which just slots into the end of the barrel. It can be either barrel. And this um, has an invisible um, infrared um, laser in there. We then have the battery box, which connects to the gun by a magnet. And we have a micro switch, which we just attach to the trigger. So there's no damage to the gun whatsoever. We're not even using the firing pin. And we also get full usage of the gun, so we get the two shots. What happens is, we fire the shot, and the signal that comes out from the muzzle insert is then picked up from the camera lens, which is in the head of the unit, the simulator unit. That then feeds the information back into the software, and that's how we know where the shot went in relation to the target. So it's immediate feedback on every shot we know exactly where it's missed, which is the information everybody wants. We have 10,000 users worldwide, we ship to every country. One of the biggest um, exports is in America, they're very keen on dry fire. It's also available in French, German and Italian. Um, but our website gives you very detailed information from our users, testimonials saying that they, their shooting has improved as a result of dry fire. Some, um, some of the users have, have won competitions, um, etc. So for me, that's, that's it. I can sit here all day and say, yeah, it's wonderful, it's going to improve your shooting. But at the end of the day, it's the user. They're telling me it's improving their shooting. So I know I'm doing my job correctly. It's great fun. Shooting's great fun. You can get the whole family involved. It's, it's great for newcomers into shooting, of course. It helps to develop their confidence to shoot, get to know the gun, get to, you know the feel of it, feel confident with it. Um, and to prepare to go out and shoot. Um, you know, we say we're here to develop and help create confident shooters because they go out and shoot more often. Now we are back to Andrew at Bowman Traps and he has seen his company's products change dramatically in his lifetime. Yeah, it was all manual traps in the uh, late 70s, 80s and uh, it's gradually changed Think about the 1990s, uh, it was a time for the big change from uh, manual traps to autos. Uh, young lads, uh, they were difficult to get hold of and uh, you had to pay them a reasonable amount, so it soon became more cost effective to buy an auto machine. Back to the traps and for a modern model, for Andrew, it's all about the casting. It's, it's that combination, it's the combination of the, uh, the good solid casting, the uh, motor and gearbox hangs on the casting. You've got all the all the drivetrain runs off the casting. The uh, one-way clutches for the, for the main main arm, the main spindle. Uh, a good solid arm. Uh, the electrics. The electrics have got to be right. Uh, you can't put. Uh, you can't skimp on the wiring. It's got to be good quality. And because uh, out in the field, I mean, it's raining today and. Uh, the traps get left out 365 days a year, so they've got to be strong and uh, reliable. And uh, we use stainless steel parts, everything's zinc coated or aluminium or stainless, so they, they will stand the weather. Uh, and uh, as usual, it's uh, British conditions are wet. Again, it just goes back to the, keep, we keep going back to the casting, but that's, that's the heart of the machine. You can. Uh, because you've got a good solid base, you can put the real power in to drive the clay through the air 
to, to, to get the distance, particularly for simulated traps. Um, we do a full range of machines, you see, we, we use the aluminium castings right from the base machine, the Supermatch 1, which is the introductory machine, uh, right up to the professional machines, say uh, an ABT uh, for international specifications, uh, trench traps, uh, so we, we cover the full range, cover the full range, game trailers, um, right up to the Olympic specifications. Andrew likes to keep as much of the work of making a trap in-house if he can. Yeah, we do all the R&D in, in the factory. Um, we, we manufacture as many components as we, as we reasonably can. We do our own aluminium casting, which is, uh, it keeps control of the quality and the price, and you can change designs quickly and easily. Um, castings are done from a high tensile LM6 aluminium, and uh, the, we've always found that the, the, the clay traps need to be substantial right from the base upwards uh, because a more solid trap throws a better clay. You get more energy into launching the clay and less vibration because of the uh, rigidity of the uh, aluminium. And we get uh, all the parts that we don't manufacture ourselves are sourced in the UK. Uh, we use uh, British made motors and gearboxes. Uh, we get all the laser cutting done at a local factory. And uh, it's, it's generally all British produced. Yeah, it is fundamentally uh, an old fashioned engineering based business, as you, as you might say. Uh, I mean, we do use modern CNC uh, milling machines. Uh, we have got some modern equipment. Um, we're not just an assembly plant, we do like to produce our own, own parts. Uh, we, we, we could get everything sourced from China, but uh, I like to keep control of the quality and, and, and we can quickly change to customers' requirements. Uh, we can, we can uh, get an order from a customer in the morning, specific size barrow or trailer or something bespoke and by the afternoon it could be all constructed, sprayed and ready for delivery in a couple of days. So we've got that flexibility, whereas if you're relying on a supply chain from China, it's just not flexible really. Springs are one of the things that we can't manufacture. We buy from a, a local company in Yorkshire and uh, we have uh, five different strengths of springs. Uh, so, I mean, the core setters nowadays want to be able to offer really fast targets uh, down to really slow targets. So you need a full, a full selection of springs because um, the slow ones are as difficult as some of the fast ones. You know, it's just how you set them up. Really. Next on the manufacturing list is the arm, the part of the trap that flings the clay. The arm and the plate assembly is uh, critical when you're building the trap up. You've got to get the uh, the arm set with about a millimetre's clearance on top of the uh, clay, just where the drive band sits, and so the, the plate's got to be flat and level. And it, invariably, on a trap that's a couple of years old, they can get bent or dropped or rolled over. So when, when, when we do a service job, that's one of the first things we check. If a customer's complaining about the poor flight to the clays coming off the machine, we uh, check the plate and invariably, like I say, the, sometimes the arm can get bent or the plate gets bent, but because we can adjust it with uh, jacking screws, uh, we can straighten the plate back up and uh, it just it sets and runs again. Yeah, they do need servicing, yeah, yeah, machines do. I mean, we've got uh, a couple of traps that came in recently that are 12 years old, they've done some hard work at the uh, uh, shooting grounds and uh, a bit of a lick of paint, some new bearings, new bushings and, and the back to almost new standard. But our customer's got several autos and some old manuals and uh, we sorted the autos out and he said uh, oh, come and have a look at this one and he got a rabbit trap, a manual rabbit trap that uh, had been fastened to a tree. It had been there that long, the tree had grown round the manual trap and uh, you couldn't actually unbolt it from the tree to grow round it. So uh, we could service it, but we couldn't remove it. <laughs> if Bowman were a make of car, what make would it be, Andrew? 
a Jaguar, I think. It's something in the Jaguar Daimler. Maybe not a Rolls Royce, but uh, Jaguar Daimler. It's a good solid trap. Um, it should give you years of trouble-free service. Um, I've built and designed them so that uh, we don't have to travel around the country servicing them in many respects. Uh, the amount we you sell over the years, we, we cover all the UK and we sell a lot abroad as well and particularly with the uh, foreign customers. Uh, they, they obviously uh, service the traps of cells um, but uh, it's, it's simple and easy to do and uh, like I say if, if, if you keep on top of the machines with the grease, grease and oil um, you shouldn't get any problems. Main problems we have is if a machine falls off a tower or a back of a lorry or it just rolls over when it's been towed round on the ground. Uh, so we get, so we send the occasional carousel out for damage, but uh, other than that, uh, they're proving very, very reliable. It, since we've been going since 1966, uh, I would say we must have shipped traps to nearly every country in the world, um, Brazil, Poland, America, Sweden, Australia. Um, Australia is a good customer of ours, and uh, the uh, I keep trying to get uh, get a service job out in Australia, but uh, not just yet. So, Andrew, honestly, do you enjoy your work? Yeah, it's a great feeling, really. It's, I mean, especially for the uh, schools challenge people. The uh, the kids there, they're uh, doing a cracking job. I mean, the we spend a lot of time practicing at the schools and when they all come together for the uh, competitive part of the programme, um, it's, it's, uh, the competition is really tough, you know, they, they're all there to win and uh, it's, it's good that they're using our traps and uh, the main priority for us is that they, they get plenty of birds in the air which are not broken, that's the, the best sign of a trap working properly. And uh, it's the way to go because the, uh, the future of the sport is the youngsters and uh, yeah, we're pleased to be involved with that. For more about Bowman Traps go to bowmantraps.co.uk That was the Schools Challenge TV. Thank you for watching. To find out more, either like us on Facebook or go to our website.